Good to have you with us tonight, folks. Thanks for watching. We start tonight with what everybody's talking about. Hollywood, the movies, the American Sniper. This weekend, Clint Eastwood's movie took the box office by storm, and it's raising a world of controversy. NBC News' Lester Holt gives us the backstory on the movie American Sniper. A box office blowout for American Sniper, raking in a whopping $90.2 million in its debut weekend, toppling previous January records. The R-rated war drama is the true story of Navy SEAL sharpshooter Chris Kyle. Two tickets for American Sniper. War movies aren't typically big money makers, but critics say American Sniper is in a category of its own, a story light on politics but heavy on humanity, translating into a commercial cash cow. I can't imagine that anybody ever could have possibly predicted it. This is a, a brutal and very violent and very action-packed war film. It was not a feel-good film and yet did the kind of box office numbers of a huge crowd pleaser. Star Bradley Cooper is getting high praise for his performance. Let me ask you a question, Chris. Would you be surprised if I told you that the Navy has credited you with over 160 kills? Cooper never met Kyle, but he spoke to him on the phone when he prepared for the role. Did he have any skepticism, Bradley, about Hollywood <laughs> yes. tackling his story? Yeah, yeah, I think he was trepidatious, I would say, and that's why I wanted to call him and let him know that I want to get to know you and, and, and I want to go on this journey. Humility from the U.S. military's most lethal sniper came through loud and clear when I sat down with Chris Kyle yeah, in so 2012. I could care less about the numbers, and, you know, everyone says I'm the most lethal. Well, I may have the most number of kills, but I'm not the best sniper. If I could figure out a number of people I saved, that's something I would brag about. You got some sort of savior complex? I just want to get the bad guys. At face value, American Cypher serves uh, to highlight some of the most disturbing consequences of this war. It humanizes the struggle of soldiers returning from combat with post-traumatic stress disorder. It also serves as a harsh reminder American soldiers were sent to war under false pretense. That's how I took it. The movie's success might suggest Americans are hungry for a hero in the never-ending fight in the Middle East. However, the real Chris Kyle was far more complicated than the hero portrayed in Eastwood's movie. In his autobiography, Kyle described the enemy as savages and despicably evil. Kyle said his only regret is that he didn't kill more. Kyle even described killing as fun and something he loved to do. Simply put, Kyle's version of the Iraq war was black and white. There was no room for humanizing Iraqis when he had his finger on the trigger. To Kyle, if they weren't Americans, they were the enemy. Unfortunately, some of those feelings have spread into our culture. The public reaction to the movie American Sniper also highlights some of the most disturbing consequences of this war, the normalization of Islamophobia and being one of them. Some moviegoers have taken to Twitter. They say the film has inspired them to want to kill Arabs and Muslims. Many use derogatory and racist language. Two journalists were criticized, who criticized the depiction of Kyle in the movie have received death threats and harassment from conservatives. It isn't just conservatives stirring controversy over the film. Michael Moore came under fire this weekend for tweeting, quote, my uncle was killed by a sniper in World War II. We were taught snipers were cowards. We'll shoot, we'll shoot you in the back. Snipers aren't heroes and invaders are worse. Moore later said his tweet was not a direct reference to Kyle or the American sniper, but added, too bad Clint Eastwood gets Vietnam and Iraq confused in his storytelling. As an American who loves freedom and loves the troops and wants this country to do things right and understand that we have a real role in this world, a moral role, I was disturbed by the movie. I sat there in the movie theater with my wife over the weekend and thought, this just underscores how many lives we have ruined because of doing something that was terribly wrong. And there is some historical reference to this as well about possibly doing something wrong. I kept hearing Senator Robert Byrd's voice in my head through the rest of the night. A, a, a month before we went into Iraq, Senator Byrd went to the Senate floor and asked this country, did we understand the consequences of what we were going to do? Did we understand that this could possibly change policy forever? 
and change the world. That's what he said. Check it out. It's an amazing speech on the Senate floor a month before we went into Iraq. We ruined a lot of lives. It's very sad, and the fight goes on. And nobody has any real answers on what the hell America ought to do right now, do we? Get your cell phones out. I want to know what you think. Tonight's question. Will the movie American Sniper make Americans rethink going to war? Text A for yes, text B for no to 67622. You can always leave a comment at our blog at ed.msnbc.com. We'll bring you the results later on in the show. For more on this, let's turn to Robert Greenwald, director of Brave New Films, and former Congressman Patrick Murphy, the first veteran of the Iraq war to serve in Congress. Gentlemen, thank you for your time tonight. I want to point out, it, there have been other movies about war. The Vietnam War, Oliver Stone's movie, Platoon. That, of course, got a great deal of scrutiny. But this one may get a lot more because of the policy and how the millennial generation is watching all of this. Robert, what do we learn from this? What were your thoughts after watching this movie, Mr. Greenwald? Well, I thought the movie was incredibly well done from a technical point of view, brilliant performances. But, Ed, this movie is, has a strong political agenda. It's a neocon fat fantasy, and there's no good Iraqi except the dead Iraqi. And I think what we will learn from this, and why the movie is, in fact, dangerous propaganda, is that we got to go to war, we got to kill people, and that's going to make democracy safer. Well, it's nonsense. It's not true. It hasn't been true. And the concern I had after watching the film was the number of people who said, yeah, we did the right thing. We went out and killed a bunch of killers, including the only good children are dead Iraqi children, which is portrayed in the film. Your thoughts, uh, Patrick Murphy, as a veteran, how did you take this movie? And I saw yesterday with my wife in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. I got choked up a couple times during it. It's hard to talk about it without having emotions. Um, but I couldn't disagree more with, with Mr. Greenwald. Um, I actually thought it was very humanizing. Uh, the struggles that we had as soldiers over in Iraq, uh, between, between protecting the Iraqi people, between protecting the men and women that you served with, and also you saw so many innocent lives being taken as collateral damage. I thought the film showed how Chris Kyle struggled eternally, internally when he had a young eight-year-old uh, Iraqi boy who picked up a rocket launcher, who aimed it toward a convoy of Marines, and Chris Kyle still didn't pull the trigger because he was saying, put it down, put it down. He didn't want to have to shoot, even though he was justified under what's called the ROE, the Rules of Engagement, because clearly his men were in imminent danger, he still didn't do it. You know why? Because he had compassion. Chris Kyle was a protector. He protected the, the SEALs, the Marines, the troops that he served with. And when he came home, he protected the veterans who were struggling to come back home. And that was ultimately the cause of his death. So, Mr. Murphy, do you reject the idea that there's any propaganda in this movie at all or any mission? I reject, Ed, with all due respect, that this was a political movie. I don't think there was any type of political justification in this movie. I, in fact, think that people out there who are trying to make this a controversy are conflating the issues. You know, I'm a guy who lost 19 men in Iraq. I came back home and ran for Congress on that. I did my best to end the war, to bring our troops home. But the story of Chris Kyle needs to be told. We should have more movies like that. Mm -hmm. We have 22 veterans who are committing suicide every day. We have outsourced our war fighting to less than 1 percent of America. We don't talk about this. We talk about it maybe for two hours every once in a while. Once a year we get a war movie. But you know what? Then everyone else goes along and we talk about it on Veterans Day. But that's it. Mr. Greenwald, People move on. Mr. Greenwald, your response to what Patrick Murphy is saying. Well, I wish that what he was saying was the movie that I saw, but it's not. Yes, it does a very, very good job of humanizing the pain and struggle of an American sniper. But defy, I defy you to name one Iraqi who is portrayed with any kind of humanity, with any sense that their country was invaded. I... Excuse me. Excuse me. Let me finish. Sure. That, that our country was invaded and occupied and that people were standing up for their rights. I think that this was not a case of speaking to an empty chair, which the director, Mr. Eastwood, has previously done, but in fact saying, yeah, 
Go get them. And what this movie will achieve will be more Americans believing and cheering for more wars and then more veterans being injured, more veterans losing arms and legs and families destroyed. Mm -hmm. and that's the tragedy and the concern about this film. Patrick? Uh, thank you. Mr. Greenwald, one of the most gripping scenes for me in the movie that I saw yesterday was when that Iraqi father was helping the Americans try to get a st intelligence about this murderer, the Syrian other sniper, who was killing American soldiers and killing Iraqis. And that Iraqi was a patriot. And that Iraqi, because he stood with the Americans, unfortunately gave his life. And the life of his young son, who was about eight, nine, ten years old in that movie, it was very humanizing. People who were trying to stand up to root out some of the extreme terrorists. And when Chris Kyle is talking about these savages, he's not talking about the Iraqi people. He is talking about the people who are murdering the Iraqi people, the people who were not trying to build a better Iraq, the Iraqis who I serve with, the Iraqis who I, frankly, tried to get yeah. some of them I got over here as American citizens, because they risked their lives just as much as the paratroopers that I serve with risked their lives. What and impact that's a story is it, that's not being Gentlemen, told. what impact is this going to have on the American people uh, five, six months down the road? Robert, your thoughts. I mean, is this, is this going to motivate people to be, be more engaged in, in what our struggle might be in, in fighting terrorism? I don't think so. I think it will motivate people to find a simple-minded, what I would call neocon approach, which is when there's a problem, go out, invade, occupy, and destroy. And what Mr. Murphy talks about, again, I wish, I wish that were in the film. I'd like to see that movie, and I think that's an important story to tell. But what I saw on that screen was a film that tore my guts apart because of the way it depicted the Iraqi people and because the way people in the movie theater were cheering every time an Iraqi got shot. How many Iraqis and Iraqi children were killed by snipers? Never a question, are there any innocents, are civilians being killed, are mistakes being made, what is going on, why are they standing up and fighting, what is going on. And that's the complexity, again, that is missing. And I wish that Mr. Murphy's story were being told rather than the political-motivated movie that I saw. Patrick? And, and, and Ed, I would, Mr. Greenwald, you make films, so I would love to see that movie. But I think <laughs> there's folks out there like Michael Moore, and with all due respect yourself, who are conflating the issue. This wasn't about the justification of war. It was even a film about the perspective of the Iraqis there. It was a movie about an American SEAL who risked his life overseas four times. It's less than 1 percent of America. We have 330 million Americans. It's less than 1 percent that have served in this longest war in American history. I've done two overseas deployments. My brother's done two overseas deployments. But let me tell you something. Most of Americans are talking on their cell phones and being at the mall. They're not even paying for this. China's paying for the wars that mm -hmm. we fought in Iraq and Afghanistan. And, and, gentlemen, I'd like to leave this discussion with this one final thought. And you first, Patrick. Why do we fight over veterans' benefits in Washington when we see that, and I do think that there was some real humanization taking place within this movie. It, it's, a, it's a horrible position for those soldiers to be in, and people in power put them in that position. Soldiers do what they're told to do. Uh, but we have not funded post-traumatic stress disorder, nor have we done enough to help those who have uh, dealing with possible suicide issues. It's, it's a story which we've done on this show the last couple of weeks. Would this movie have an impact on lawmakers, Patrick? I would hope so, Ed. I'd hope so. I, hope, I think it should be mandatory watching, uh, not on the justification issue, but on the struggles of people like Chris Kyle and his family, by the way. Yeah. I mean, the struggle of he's going to his fourth deployment and his wife saying, I'm not sure if I'm going to be here when you come home. Yeah. You know, I, I've seen soldiers deployed who've come in and, and broke, you know, these are paratroopers from the 82nd Airborne Division, six foot three, 220 pounds, all muscle, who break down and, and lost it to me because they don't know how to move forward because they don't know if their family's going to be there when they go home because Green, of the struggles. What, what movie will, what, what impact might this movie have on Washington? Well, I don't, I don't know, Ed, but I couldn't agree with you and Mr. Murphy more that the pain and struggle of the veterans, the lives that are being torn apart, the families that are being destroyed, 
And that is a result, as you said, it's policy made, soldiers following the policy. Will the movie ever, for anybody, suggest we should take maybe a moment to think before we invade and occupy? I doubt it. Will it maybe, hopefully, provide more services for some of the heroic uh, men and women who go out there? Hard to know, given uh, the approach of the film yeah. and given the fact that everyone in Washington knows what's going on in terms of our veterans. Gentlemen, I appreciate I appreciate the discussion, and I know our audience does, too. Robert Greenwald and Patrick Murphy, thanks for your time tonight on this issue.